So I have to admit, last night I was annoyed. I was really, really peed off and I was really angry. I know three people who have passed from the COVID-19 virus personally. Mm-hmm. And I was told that death is a natural part of life, that it's a cover-up, that you should basically get over it and the real risk is 5G and this idiot was actually uh, encouraging people to go outside of their houses to disobey government and national health service recommendations to stop so many individuals dying. So initially I was really annoyed but then I thought, you know what, this guy's a fool, he's so foolish he doesn't realise that he's a fool, so let me put out something that's going to educate them on how foolish they are so they can hopefully change their ways and become a little bit more scientific in their thinking. So the first stage of scientific research is you need a hypothesis and you need to counter that with a null hypothesis. This is basically an argument and a counter argument. The reason why is you want to be unbiased in your approach as much as you can when you're trying to conduct a scientific study. 5G whistleblowers are barely here yet because a lot of them can't actually separate their own opinion from uh, their own belief system. Therefore, they can only argue that 5G is unsafe. They can't counteract it with the argument that it is safe because they can't balance their opinion for the uh, use of scientific literature and scientific ethics and good scientific methods. They can't do it. This would be equivalent of me arguing that sugar is bad for you. I might say that sugar is bad for you, but it also might be good for you. Sugar, yes, has shown to be high, have a higher correlation to diabetes and heart disease. But on the other side, sugar is found in fruit, which is really protective of cancer. So therefore, what's the truth? This would be the equivalent of me also arguing that all radiation is bad, which is completely unscientific. You want to say that, yet yeah, some radiation is good and some is bad. Bad radiation might be excessive exposure to, for, to, for example, x-rays. But then I could also argue that radiation is good because it heats our planet. It provides energy uh, for plants to grow. And as well as that, it um, provides us with vitamin D. That's ultraviolet light, right? It comes with radiation. It comes from the sun. The sun is our pro- produce of uh, radiation, which ultimately we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for radiation. The other thing that you can do when conducting your uh, hypothetical argument or you're just conducting your hypothesis is you can try and compare like for like. So you can ask the question, for example, have the properties of 5G been seen elsewhere? And when they are there, what happens? For example, we can see that the uh, wavelength uh, of 5G has been used in airports or radar scanners and it's been shown to be safe. And um, the high frequency wavelength doesn't necessarily mean it's dangerous. For example, light has a much higher uh, frequency sorry, uh, than that used by 4G. I think it's about a billion times more than that used by a thousand or a billion times more than that. U- sorry, no, a million times uh, more than that used of 5G. Also, we can question, is 5G uh, significantly ionising? Therefore, does it cause cellular damage? And we can see, and I've linked the article here, uh, nope, there is no evidence of it providing um, ionising radiation that could potentially damage our cells, but we can still test it. So that's stage one. They're not there yet. They're not, they're not even halfway there past phase one yet. Let's clarify. But we're going to go on to phase two anyway. Stage two is actually uh, conducting a controlled scientific experiment. It has to be controlled because we want to make sure that the variable, i.e. the radiation or the 5G, is the only thing that is causing the changes that we see in the study. For example, there is a study that is quoted quite a lot where there are, I think, are about 18,000 rodents tested. They were exposed to radiation for uh, the vast majority of the day. For, I think 20 out of 24 hours, they were exposed to 2G and 3G radiation. And after 10 years, they were found that a few of them have developed cancer. Now, the only problem with this mm-hmm. is that the radiation that they were exposed to wasn't significant or wasn't the same as the radiation uh, that humans might be exposed to when it comes to our mobile phones. It would be the equivalent of asking the question, are Brits at risk when it comes to skin cancer if they go out in the British sunshine for 15 to 20 minutes a day every day throughout the year and then taking 100 Brits, taking them to Australia in the midst of the summer and getting them to lay in the sun for 10 hours a day with no protection and then asking them if and then conducting the study to see if they got skin cancer even if they did develop skin cancer is not replicable to the environment that we're actually testing on the counter side we also have a study where they tested uh, a group of, of rodents again with 2g and 3g radiation and they showed no significant outcome when it came to cellular damage but this study was only conducted over 20 days 
This means that once again, because humans have their phones on the most of the time, it is not supportive of the hypothesis that 3G or 4G is safe, for example. So we can rule that one out as well. So this is now the third stage which um, these 5G whistleblowers are furthest from. This is a literature mm -hmm. review. This is where you ultimately take a lot of studies and you uh, try and compare them against each other and you take out the bad ones and you keep the good ones, the controlled ones. And then you try and, and come to a conclusion as to whether there is a significant change based on the variables that you're testing, i.e. did what I think was going to happen actually happen? Ultimately, the whole reason for science is to stop idiots popularising their biased, uninformed opinions and basically pacing it as fact. That is what science is there to avoid. And these whistleblowers have put themselves in this position as have told everyone or created a platform for them where they and everyone else thinks they're scientists but they're being incredibly un unscientific and non-scientific in doing so which begs irony ultimately the scientific response is that yes 5g could be potentially dangerous but so far we've got significant evidence to suggest otherwise but they should continually test and test and retest whether or not exposure to this radiation is going to be a good thing or a bad thing. What to me is more disconcerting with uh, the amount of traction that these individuals have got from their uh, popularization of their theory that 5G is bad is that it is showing a really nasty unfortunate side of human nature and I think a really nice way to summarize this is in myths that we are all quite aware of one myth is I've been to the mountaintop this is my message and you should all obey now this is basically what these individuals are doing they're saying that I know the truth I've been to the mountaintop I've done the, re the research and I'm here to tell you what you should or shouldn't do it's incredibly narcissistic and very dangerous these individuals are telling people to go outside when it's not safe and which will actually increase the amount uh, of COVID-19 that will be spread if everyone was to listen to their opinion and to what they advise the other is the myth or the story of Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother because he was jealous, essentially, that he was in greater favour from God. I think that there are a lot of individuals who are very, very displeased with their position in society, with how much they've been able to essentially climb the hierarchy of their own existence or their own proposed existence. And the only way for them to actually gain any traction in life is to destroy the structure which they see to have been developed to their own demise and to therefore create chaos and havoc but at least they're going to be at the front of that chaos and havoc and anarchy when it actually comes about once again it's incredibly narcissistic it's incredibly incredibly bitter and it more shows a disdain for society and a disdain for structure rather than their wish to actually help people that's my rant over. I think it's a real shame that we can see this side of humanity at a time where individuals are incredibly vulnerable and at threat of this virus. These individuals want to, whether subconsciously or consciously, take advantage of this chaos by proposing a basically scapegoat theory that everyone can go outside and have a good time as long as they basically dissolve the government and dis dissolve the NHS as it currently is. It's disgusting. I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate having individuals who I've known and have respected who have passed from this virus and then for people who are incredibly unscientific and idiotic to be proposing an alternative motion that will actually put more people in harm. I don't appreciate it. I, I really don't want to see it on my Facebook page anymore and I would appreciate it if you were to share this post if you agree with me or if you and agree with me in a completely or as unbiased perspective as you can be. If you appreciate the thought that's gone into this, I will post the full post below but that's my rant over. Thank you.